So, all right. Hello, everybody. My name is Steve Mills. I'm a mechanical engineer and technical lead at Meta, and I am also the steering committee representative for the Cooling Environments Project. And so I've got uh, two topics I'm going to talk about today. Um, to start off, I'm just going to do a project update for uh, the cooling environments, and then second of all, I'm going to talk about a roadmap for a durable uh, chip coolant temperature. So to get started, let's uh, begin with the cooling environments update. So um, to begin with, uh, Cosmo, why don't you come up and introduce yourself? Yep, yep, go ahead. Hi, I'm uh, Cosmo Pecchioli. I'm with the BP Castrol, and I work with Steve in the cooling environments project, uh, which uh, uh, under the project, that there are four sub-projects, uh, a, a cold plate, uh, uh, immersion cooling that yesterday was uh, extensively presented by, by Rolf, uh, door and heat reuse, actually five projects, uh, heat reuse and uh, advanced cooling facilities, which is the project that uh, coordinates all these different technologies and implement them at the uh, uh, building level. So that's it. If you have questions, um, you can see me around, and uh, and we can try to help uh, to answer them. Yep. Thanks a lot, Cosmo. So anybody that's made any contributions to Open Compute uh, is familiar with the core tenets of OCP: uh, the efficiency, stability, openness, and impact. Uh, just last year, we also added in the fifth tenet, which is sustainability. Um, to kind of expand on, on that particular uh, topic. Um, so anybody that's making any new contributions also has to show how their contribution also impacts the sustainability of the larger ecosystem. So everybody here is part of the OCP community, right? So we want to encourage everybody to come and join and participate in what we're doing here, ask questions, get involved, join the meetings, um, we really need everybody's expertise as we move forward in time. There are lots and lots of new stuff to work on. The Cooling Environments Project ha covers quite uh, a wide range of technologies, right? We, so we do everything from cold plates, hoses, manifolds, valves, immersion tanks. We've got rear door heat exchangers, whether they're refrigerated or not. Um, we uh, have a project dedicated to uh, um, all the interfaces between rack level coolants and the larger data center. And then we even uh, uh, re the heat reuse, right? What do we do with all the heat that's uh, coming out of the data centers and how do we make better use of that? So there's just a broad range of categories that uh, we, we are working on and would really, really appreciate everybody's uh, engagement as we go forward. So as uh, Cosmo has alluded to, we've got uh, five different sub-projects inside of cooling environments. So the door heat exchangers and the immersion are pretty self-explanatory, the type of technologies and work that's getting done in those areas. Uh, the cold plate sub-project um, not only just covers cold plates, but it also covers the hoses, all of the valves and manifolds, all in any time in that rack level ecosystem, all falls under the cold plate. Uh, advanced cooling facilities is the project that handles all of the interfaces between rack level and the data center, the TCS loop. And then finally, the heat reuse, um, where we're focused on uh, use cases for the heat generated by the data center. So I've got two call-outs uh, for a specific project. So this is uh, related to immersion. So uh, if you'd like to get more involved in the immersion project, um, they have meetings every month where they're completely open to anybody who would like to join, where they talk about new technologies that are on the horizon, um, as well as any hurdles that are uh, impeding the ability for us to deliver our technologies into the marketplace. So out of those discussions, um, ideally, there's some work streams that come out of those, whether it's specifications or white papers or whatever other education needs to be done to kind of enable um, those, uh, either technologies or, or overcome those hurdles, um, uh, specifically related to immersion. So if you're curious about how to get involved in immersion, this is a great place to get started. Um, and then I'm going to have another shout out here from the cold plate project. So they're in the process of kicking off 
a work stream right now related to the fluids inside the, the cold plate loop. And right now we have lots of support right now from the fluid suppliers, uh, but we do need some more help from anybody that is uh, you know, specifying, designing, manufacturing, uh, deploying, maintaining, uh, any, any of those type of people that are uh, involved. Uh, we really need your expertise as well as we go through and write um, specifications around what those fluids need to be. Because um, it's not just about the, the thermal capabilities, right? It has to do with regulatory and, and, and in use and, and, and lots of different areas. Um, so we could really use more expertise from people outside the fluids area as we kick off this particular work stream. Um, so finally, I would just like to say, please, please get involved. Um, if you're not sure um, how to get involved, you know, reach out to me. Uh, Cosmo over here can, can and also point you to any of the different areas. So normally this just starts out with a conversation on how we can, you know, what you're interested in doing, and we can try and align you up with the different work streams that we've got going. Uh, like I said, there's, there's lots of opportunity, so feel free to, to uh, jump on board. So now um, I'm going to switch over to my second topic, which is a roadmap for a durable chip coolant temperature. Um, so I'll ask uh, Mr. Artman if you'd like to come up and introduce yourself real quick. Uh, my name is Paul Hartman. I work at AMD. I've been working in thermal and power for 20, 25 years. So this is a, a group of the industry partners that are involved in this particular discussion. Um, so we're also looking at expanding these discussions as we go forward in time. Uh, the focus of these discussions is to kind of find a coolant temperature um, at the component that you're trying to cool. So we're not talking about uh, any of the different uh, temperatures in the primary loop or the secondary loops, right? This is the temperature that uh, is actually on the component. Um, choosing a, that, that temperature so it has a durable lifetime. So I can explain a little bit more about what that means. Um, but the, the, the number we settled on is, is kind of 30 C. Uh, coolant temperature at the component going forward. Um, so first of all, if we can kind of talk about the power trends that are driving this. Yeah, so pa power's been in a pretty aggressive uh, <laughs> gen to gen increase. So if, you, if you're looking at this chart, red is kind of showing uh, CPU power. And what we saw is for about a decade, we're about 145 watts on CPUs. And then as you kind of see, we went to 350, 400, and I think we're topping out about 500 watts on, on compute. So the, the red line is kind of uh, flat lighting a little bit. That's showing the trend in power over time. Uh, the green line is actually CPU power. And that's where the, the power continues to go pretty aggressively. Uh, we started at 300 watts on double Y GPUs. Uh, NVIDIA started with XM2 around 300 watts. And we're pretty much around a, a kilowatt right now between the MI on AMD sides, uh, Gaudi 3, and uh, latest from NVIDIA, we're, we're pushing 1,000 1, watts. And so our concern is on the CPU side, if, if you look at it, uh, I'm plotting kind of water temperatures versus what they can support in thermal resistance. The blue is kind of showing our thermal resistance. So what it's showing is that, I think, Steve, um, if, you're, if you're on a compute and, and you can still do 50C water delivery to a compute and, and cool that pretty resiliently at, at powers we're looking at, uh, what we're seeing is, is that GPU power is going to 1,000 to 1,500 watts and above. We're really saying that to have a resilient solution, you need to target 30C. So I, I know that's not optimal for some place in, in Europe where you're looking at 40 to 45C, but a consistent, you know, if we're looking out five years and building a data center and trying to support NVIDIA and... Go, go. Excuse me, is there scale on your, on your power? Is it just increasing? Yeah, yeah there's, there, there isn't a scale. Uh, and the reason there isn't a scale is, is NVIDIA, Intel, and AMD didn't want to be specific about what we were doing in power. Um, I can say we've, we've said we're going to do 1,600 watts on our MI next generation, 1,600 watts TBP. Um, but yeah, I, I think there's sensitivity to publish this stuff, but we know we're today. We're, we're at a, a, a kilowatt and above today. Um, so again, what we're, we're seeing is, is the, the ASIC temperature is driving at those power levels, that density around the 30C water. Um, in parallel, so we, we defined this 30C resilient temperature in OCP 
and it worked with ASHRAE. So I'm on ASHRAE TC 9.9. .9. So ASHRAE will come out with a new TCS classes, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. So we're going 30 is the bottom, 50 at the top end. Um, but the other thing that we're, we're getting into issues is also the HPM. So the ASIC is really a heat density issue that we're running into. Go, go, Cosmo. I'm sorry, I have to go back. Yeah, no. Yes. Okay, yeah, a good point. Um, and, and so it, there's been defined for a while our FWS, facility water supply temperature. Um, and those have been defined at, at 27, 32, multiple temperatures. It's, it's, uh, but that's the this temperature that your facility brings to your CD coolant distribution unit. What this is defining is the actual temperature of your IT. So what's critical for an NVIDIA, a Meta, a AMD is to know what temperature right chip sees. So this is the temperature to the chip. So that, that we need to design for a 30 degree chip temperature when you're looking at an aggressive uh, GPU room app. Um, I, and again, what we're seeing is those ASIC power densities keep coming up and they're driving that. Um, what we also see is HPM. HPM is used on both compute and on, on uh, GPUs. And it's not a density, it's just a stacking. So we're talking about eight high, 12 high, 16 high. So it's, it's not a huge amount of power, but it's a huge thermal resistance. So we're seeing, you know, it's anywhere from 0.7 to 1 C per watt resistance to the package, and you're talking 30 or 40 watts, so you have a lot of delta between the package. So the things we're looking at is, so if you look at that blue line, that's thermal resistance. It's kind of flat lining. And the reason we're kind of making that a little bit flatter toward the end is we're saying, we're gonna commit package improvements. So how do we get our packages better to get there? Otherwise, we couldn't even get to 30. And then what we wanna start working on is HBM, and how do we improve that package? Because that's our next gate. We run into, you know, it's right edge at edge, or my, am I, is my memory the gate or is my GPU the gate? And it's really workload intensive. If I'm HP, HBM intensive, it's a lot of times the HBM is what's limiting my ability to keep driving that power. And as you know, with a chat GPT, that it's an insatiable amount of power consumption we're driving this space. Yeah, thanks, Paul. So obviously if you're trying to cool a component, right, the colder the coolant temperature, the better, right? So you get more performance. On the data center side, though, you want just the opposite of that, right? Um, you want to run that coolant temperature as, as hot as you can get it. Um, so if you can see right there, for every 4C, uh, the coolant temperature is lowered below the 30C that we're talking about. The chiller operational hours for a year actually increases by about 20%. And that's kind of a worldwide average, but it just shows the efficiency impact of going below 30C. Um, also, data centers, like Paul was mentioning, they take a very long time to build, and then once they're built, you have an expectation that those data centers are going to last for, you know, 10, 15 years. Um, and then uh, modifying those data centers to lower that coolant temperature below their design point is very, very expensive and very, very time consuming, right? So we have kind of a, uh, competing constraints right here where um, on the chip component side, cooler is better, data center side, hotter is better. So we've kind of selected 30C as a durable temperature because it's, while it's not necessarily ideal for either the component suppliers or the data center su suppliers, it's advantageous to both of us to agree to this. Um, that way the investments that the community builds in data centers uh, will have at least some sort of a lifespan. And it also gives uh, component suppliers that are building uh, components a place to sell into, right? If everybody builds data centers with a 50C expectation, uh, that's, again, great for right now. Um, but if you're trying to cool uh, AI components for an extended period of time, that data center is not going to be viable for very long. Um, so that's kind of what was driving us to 30C. So kind of our next steps is we'll generate a white paper to add to some more detail around the uh, analysis to support this. Um, we'll hopefully have that later on this year. And then as, as Paul mentioned, we're also gonna be working to kind of align the HBM uh, requirements around this 30C expectation. Um, so those are kind of the two steps that we've got going forward. Uh, and if you wanna learn more, um, we've had uh, some longer panel discussions and the like that uh, you can go to this QR code and uh, uh, have a much longer format than, than what, I, what I had today. So. Um, so that's all I've got. Um, if you've got any questions at all, whether it's on a durable 30C coolant or on the overall cooling environments project, I'm happy to talk about those right now. Oh, yes. So what is that 30C from the chip on a durability perspective? Uh, 
Uh -huh. Going from 50 to, to 30? Oh, the, how much derating you would have to put in on the AI? Um, um, I don't know what those numbers are. Yes, we, we've looked at that. It's, it's, uh, it's going to be significant. Uh, but I don't know what it is right off the top of my head. Um, but uh, um, yeah, I mean, that would definitely be in the white paper. Anything else? Okay, cool. Thanks for your time, everybody.